above the wild sands of the desert, an ordered eight-cylinder chariot with a red-clad, wrecked-faced man wielding a flaming temple guitar, a war boy with a mouth full of English air, running to the temple of the British spirit, and a row of supermodel breeders with perfect bikes. Every frame is stimulating the restless hormones. As a new generation of young people, this movie you cannot miss. After the outbreak of a nuclear war in the future world, the global land acidification, water depletion, on top of the wasteland, the fortress of doom, there is a horrible face of the brutal warlord named Ned Joe, although he does not die, but the nuclear radiation has long festered his skin. He breathes by artificial lungs, and his transparent armor is his last protective shield. His only two children, a dwarf shaped like George and a limbless fool, are none of them able-bodied heirs. Today, the day of the Fortress of Doom's resupply, Ned Joe opened the floodgates to celebrate with the people, with all eyes on him. Ned Joe sends his subordinate Sarah to Gasoline Town to trade for oil and pass by the bullet farm for some more bullets. She is escorted by war boys all over town. These bleep-skinned war boys have been brainwashed since childhood. They are proud to die for Ned Joe and enter the Hall of Valor. But severely anemic due to nuclear radiation, they need to supply blood to healthy humans like Mike at the time to survive. The convoy slowly drove out of the Fortress of Doom. A few hours ahead is the oil town, but Sarah suddenly changed the direction of progress. The messenger was puzzled but had to obey orders. Soon, Meatball George noticed something was wrong and how the convoy had entered enemy territory. Ned Joe snapped to attention. He turned through the greenery area, opened the vault steel door inside has long been empty. The floor was written our children, absolutely not warlords. It turns out that Sarah took all of Ned Joe's supermodel breeders away. In an instant, the war drones were beating and the war boys were all out in force. Naturally, Philip didn't want to miss this great opportunity. He took his blood supply belt, Mike, and strapped in at the front of the eight-cylinder warbirds. On top of the yellow sand, heavily armed war boys playing passionately in a red-clad stunt face stacked three layers of Cadillacs, Saturday Ned Joe. Philip thought he had Ned Joe's approval and charged ahead with all his might. At this point, Sarah has broken into the territory of the Predator Vulture. Suddenly, barbs appeared on the ground, and the enemy killed the first person. Sarah swerved nimbly to avoid the danger, but the strained hedgehog-like chariot behind her continued to chase her. Sarah fixed the throttle and attacked the chariot behind her. Behind her left Ned Joe's convoy is getting closer and closer. Philip's eight-cylinder chariot is the first in the group. The gun cavalry attacked the vultures first. During the fierce battle, a badly wounded war boy sprayed silver paint into his mouth, as if he had regained his life. This act was like a powerful adrenaline rush for all the war boys. They attacked like crazy. Finally, in an explosion, the last chariot of the vulture gang was also destroyed. At this time, a white-clad breeder crawled out from the back of the vehicle looking out of place in the abrupt picture. The foolish messenger then realized that Sarah had betrayed Ned Joe. A great battle is about to break out, but Ned Joe's army is right behind her, and in front of her is a sandstorm. How can Sarah cope? Meanwhile, Mike just broke free and was swept into the sand. The strong Mike carried a body to the back of a truck. However, the scene surprises him. A row of beautiful women were showering, all of them with top supermodel bodies. A few hours ago, they were the procreative tools of the brutal warlord Ned Joe. Faced with such deadly temptation, Mike raises his shotgun and decides to do what a man should do. What does she want to do to help him cut the chains off his head? Of course. Just then, Sarah takes the opportunity to make a surprise attack. She grabbed the shotgun from Mike's hand, but she didn't realize it was unloaded. They tangled together, one restrained by the chains, one with a broken arm, and they were neck and neck in the fight. Philip, who had awakened, then joined them in the fight. He thought Mike was helping Dejo catch the traitor and attack Sarah, but he was restrained by the breeders. Mike and Sarah had a fierce fight over a pistol. Although Sarah is a woman, but she is still a very strong fighter. None but Mike was able to load it smoothly with the cooperation of Philip. Ned Joe's army was about to arrive. Philip helped Mike cut the chains but was knocked to the ground. Mike grabbed the chariot alone. But Sarah didn't panic at all, because the car had her special start sequence, and he couldn't drive far without the code. Sure enough, Mike stopped. Behind him was Ned Joe's army. They all made a compromise, but they hadn't driven far when, in the distance, Ogre, the boss of Oil Town, 
came along with his stinking caravan of meat. The war became more exciting. Sarah had also made preparations in advance for this escape. There was a group of speedsters on top of the cliff, and they had agreed to exchange gasoline for the chance to escape, but their boss temporarily backtracked. Because at first Sarah did not say that the chasers were so many people, this single business must be added money. After that, they started a fierce chase. Fortunately, the boss of the biker party still ordered his subordinates to blow up the cliff to block the advance route of Ned Joe's army. The bikers kept chasing Sarah, Sarah and Mike won with snipers to kill the enemy from afar, one with a gun to shoot accurately at close range. This is a wonderful match, really make people watch the blood boil, they just killed the bikers. Ned Joe surprisingly drove the chariot from the ruins of the cliff to climb over, the car is really powerful too, and soon catches up with Sarah's car. At this point, Philip said that he wanted him to kill the traitor himself. Ned Joe ordered his subordinates to fling Philip towards the car, but he didn't expect that he had just taken one step when the chain he was carrying got stuck on the iron fence. Ned Joe was completely disappointed. He had to kill the traitor himself. He leaps in front of Sarah and orders his son to fire the spear and hook the steering wheel. Sarah rushes to catch it with a wrench. However, the boulder was right in front of her, and even though she had just it in time, she crashed into it. Fortunately, people are alright. The breeder, who was hiding behind the car, suddenly slipped and fell. Ned Joe saw the situation jerking the steering wheel chariot overturned, but everything is still too late. Ned Joe hugged the dead breeder and was very sad. Sarah could only continue to move forward. They headed east to the place, known as the mother of all oases. In the evening, the red-haired breeder, who was on sentry duty, behind the car found Philip hiding under the car seat. He regretted that he could not do his duty for Ned Joe. The redhead reassures him that perhaps the Hall of Nations is not the best place for him to be. At this moment, Philip experienced a wonderful feeling he had never experienced before. At night, the car sinks into the swamp and Mike rushes to put trigger mines in the back where the wheels have crushed. As a result, Ned Joe's convoy was blocked and had to stop temporarily. Meanwhile, the doctor following the convoy cut open the belly of the depressed man who had died during the day with Ned Joe's permission only to find that the unborn baby was not only healthy but also a boy, but now dead. An enraged Ned Joe immediately dispatched his most powerful tracked vehicle. Mike's group's car was too deep in the mud to move. The curly-haired man shot at Mike with a half-meter, long pistol. He doesn't know how scary Mike is. Mike set up his sniper rifle. It's okay, it's just bad form. Mike fires a second shot and still misses. Sarah couldn't watch anymore. She took the sniper rifle from Mike and adjusted the scope magnification. Don't breathe. The curly-haired man concentrated all his firepower on Mike after learning that he had been blinded in both eyes. Finally, the chariot finally drove out of the mud under the indirection of the force between the ankle chain and the tree. After they came to safety, Mike took a machete from the chariot and disappeared. A short while later, there was a loud bang in the distance and Sarah raised her gun again to point at the person who appeared in the night. She looked closer to find it was Mike, his face full of blood covered with bullets. Also did not forget to give Philip a steering wheel. After watching this movie, I realized that Venom is indeed the most egregious role he has ever played. Then, the car drove through a crow swamp, the weird scavenger stopped in his tracks. The next day, after a long journey, they finally arrived at the so-called mother of all oasis. Sarah met the former clan members, but when she asked where the oasis was, she got this answer. But if you came from the west, you passed it. It turns out that the crow swamp they passed last night is the former oasis. The acidification of the land caused by nuclear contamination looks like it has a much greater impact than expected. The only people who used to be in the clan are the old women in front of them. Sarah slowly unloaded her equipment and knelt on top of the yellow sand and let out a desperate cry. Her faith at this moment is like this yellow sand becomes vain. Mike, however, pointed to the Fortress of Doom on the map and said, This is the oasis you are looking for. Plenty of water, lush greenery, all the food available. At this point, Ned Joe's main army was all on the road to rampage. The Fortress of Doom is simply unbeatable. Just as he finished speaking, Ned Joe's army discovered Mike's whereabouts. A life and death battle of speed and passion was once again on. The red clad mutilated face as the ambient group had gotten high early. The first group of war boys ran ahead and released the barricade spikes. For faster speed, 
They all sprayed gasoline into the mechanical booster. The scene was really very exciting. Fortunately, the group leader killed the pilot to declare the battle officially started. The doomsday army was heavily armed and the old woman was a very accurate shot. People kept dying in the fierce battle. Break flexible gun, cavalry all aboard the chariot. Mike could still deal with one or two enemies, but the old women were killed one after another. A pregnant woman was taken by the gun cavalry in the process. Mike almost fell under the car, but fortunately, Sarah helped him in time. She didn't expect the masked man to climb up from behind the car and stab Sarah in the abdomen. War boy was about to crash into Mike when Sarah pushed through the pain and pinned him down. At that moment, Philip appeared from under the car to help Mike board the ogre's car and successfully took control. With a seriously injured Sarah, Mike used the ogre's mutated foot to press on the gas pedal to escape successfully and then set the tanker on fire, losing half of the doomsday core. Ahead is the entrance to the canyon. Ned Joe also caught up. Sarah chose to take the initiative to board the chariot under the cover of the jailbreakers. She used an iron hook to hang Dead Joe's breathing mast from the side and rear. Remember me. He's dead. And Dead Joe, the brutal warlord, was finally dead. Mike pulled Sarah up just in time, and she was really to brave this way. Ahead is the decisive Cliff Gorge. This time, Ned Joe's son climbed up from nowhere to pull the engine off the car. This time Philip not for others only for the heart of the loved one resolutely killed the steering wheel. The car successfully blocked the only entrance. After arriving at the Fortress of Doom, Mike lifted Ned Joe's body and announced the end of the dictatorship. The crowd began to chant Sarah's name. The floodgates opened once again and Sarah looked at Mike in the crowd. They nodded to each other. Perhaps this is the silent communication between heroes.